Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First, it's a pleasure and a big honor for me to have the opportunity here to present my clinical results. So this is my disclosure. First, let me start <clears throat> the conventional open cervical discectomy with or without bone effusion or disc replacement is still worldwide, I think you agree with me, the golden standard treatment for cervical symptomatic disc protrusion. I think we are here at the ISAS. That means the International Society of the Advanced Spinal Society. And we should think about maybe to change our mind, what we can change and how we can help our, our patients. What was the purpose of the study, what I will present right now to you? It was at least to evaluate the effectiveness and complication rate of an anterior percutaneous minimal invasive surgical treatment for cervical radiculopathy in the presence of a formal stenosis, discaniation, or both. Let's, let's ask first, what is the advantage and why endoscopic? <clears throat> compared to the conventional open cervical discectomy with or without bony fusion or disc replacement. Let me start first with a disadvantage. First, I agree, and maybe you agree with me, it is technically very demanding. You will have a long learning curve. In my cohort, the patients are awake because I perform this procedure in analogous sedation. For that, you need a special anesthesia and special equipment. For me personally and for my patients, I think what is the advantage? The advantage is for f at first you can perform this procedure in a local anesthesia. I see a much faster recovery compared to the golden standard treatment. And I think it's a closing, this procedure is a closing the gap between the conservative treatment and conventional open procedures. That means fusions or disc replacements. Or additionally, I keep with this, or we keep, we can keep with this procedure the natural mo mobility and stability, and a fusion or ADR is not necessary, but still, if we have a failure, it's possible. Indication. Primary, uh, what was the indication for the study? Primary cervical brachialgia, shoulder and arm pain, worse than neck pain, numbness and adenomy in the arm, failure of conservative therapy over a time period, of at least three months, positive MRI and herniation. Exclusion criteria, mainly previous disc sur surgery, cervical myelopathy, patients younger than 18 uh, or older than 60 years, a central stenosis or bilateral myelo or radiculopathy. How was the technique? First, I performed always um, um, the discography, for that you will need an uh, image intensifier um, the discography should show that there is no um, contrast leakage. If you see a contrast le uh, leakage like in the slide, um, I did not use chymopapain. And at least this procedure was performed in combination with a mechanical decompression, that means reamer, and at least uh, with forceps removing. Here you see the reamers and the forceps. At least in this cohort, uh, I, I could investigate 267 patients because they fully followed these criteria. The follow-up was next day. It was only a physical examination. Then after three months, including physical examination and including a control MRI, one year questionnaire, and after two years, additional questionnaire. 12 patients without a two years follow-up, one year follow-up, the one patient was an excellent result and two were good. And at least 255 patients fully fired this two years follow-up. Because the time is running now, normally there's a video. Here, for example, you see the, the interoperative positioning of the forceps to be sure that you are with your tip of your forceps at the right spot where you expect the herniation. Uh, Scars are virtually not existing because the, the approach to the cervical spine is just a stitch incision, not more of some millimeters. The patient can leave the clinic two hours after the procedure and a collar is not needed. 
complications. There were no infection, three significant local hematoma, but with auto-absorption, no neurological damage, three early recurrence herniation, that means a recurrence herniation of 1.2%. I had a follow-up of two years. Here again, a picture. Now I have to go ahead in four seconds. I think it's not possible. So if, we ask, if I ask my patients for their uh, own satisfaction and own judgment, so in uh, excellent and a good result, um, almost 90% uh, of my patients reported a good and excellent result. If, I, if you ask before preoperative of um, numbness in the arm, so it was not present anymore in 92%. Loosening of the, stre uh, of the strength in, in their arm, in 216 patients, they had uh, loosen, loosening of the strength in their arm, and after the operation, 91% were not present anymore. In the McNabb, uh, we see an excellent good result, also in almost 90%. There uh, was an improvement in the VIS rate of 6.7, and for neck pain, 6.2. Recurrence rate, I, like in the beginning, I told you in the first three months, I had earlier recurrence rate in three, patient, in three patients. From all 267 patients, there was an all-over recurrence rate of 12 patients. That means an all-over recurrence rate of almost 6%. In the conclusion, um, I agree with all of you, this procedure is a delicate but safe and effective treatment for cervical disc herniation, even in the case of spondylosis and foraminal stenosis, and in my own center, the golden standard already. Thank you for your attention.